Now what we need to do is set up the grains for the dirt that's going to come out of this explosion. So let's go back into Houdini and use vellum grains to set that up. So let's start setting up our grains. Let's put down a sphere, call it grains. Let's change this to be a polygon and let's change this to be 0 0.8, 1.8. Then let's change the frequency to be 10. Let's put down a clip because we only want the top part of the sphere. Then let's put down a fill, polyfill. Now let's put down a vellum grains node. Vellum configure grains. So now we're going to click create points from volume and this will create a bunch of points that we'll use. We're going to change this particle size here in a minute, but for now this is fine. And let's put down a point velocity. Plug that into the first input and let's put down a vellum solver. And let's just start plugging that in. Then we already have something. It's falling right through the floor. So let's go to the vellum solver, turn on ground position. Now you can see we have all our points working, but they're rolling way too much for starters. So let's go into forces and then under dynamic scale, we can change how much this friction is affecting it. So let's change it to 0.4. Just going to lower our velocity once we have some friction in there. Okay, that looks good. Now let's go back into our vellum constraints grain and let's change this particle size just a bit. Let's change it to 0 0.05 to start. Now we have a lot more grains, but we're just going to use this for testing purposes. Let's go into this point velocity and this will allow us to affect our velocity so we can have them shoot up into the air like if there was a small explosion. Now let's turn on our velocity and then let's say add velocity, and let's say 7. Now you can see they're all flying up at once. We don't want that. We want it to be more random and not as uniform, obviously. So add curl noise. Then let's add a curl noise of five. Pretty good. Let's try a scale of four, actually. Works pretty well. So now let's change this to a particle size 0 0.01. And right now, if we play this, all the particles are going to collide with themselves and it's going to create a very noisy, weird effect. So we need to go into the vellum solver and we need to change the substeps, substeps to get a more accurate simulation. So let's change this to four. Now this is a bit heavier of a simulation and it's going to be a lot of particles. So let's put down a file cache. And let's call this and let's also set the total frame range to be in 70. Now let's just change the name here to be grains. Grains dollar sign F for each frame. And then let's just cache this real quick. Now that we're done caching, you can see we have our simulation and we don't want this half sphere location beginning of our grain. So let's just put down a time shift. Let's set that to dollar sign F plus two. That way we start out our file sprite sheet with something interesting. And now let's put down a color node. Let's set that to be maybe 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2. Make it a bit darker. Be fine. Now let's put down a null. Call this grains out. And now let's go to our out network and put down a labs flipbook textures. And you can see we have this non-volumetric geometry path. So we'll click that and let's select the null that we just made in our grains. Okay. And now it wants a camera. So let's go to 
front viewport, make a new camera. And just like before, we need to have the resolution be the same. And then let's move it up a bit. We don't want to see this pile up of grains, so we want the camera to be just above that. We're just seeing the explosion. Maybe something like that. Center it a bit. Yep, that looks good. Okay, so then go here, and then we're going to select the camera we just made, camera one, and go to export. And again, we do not have emissive, so we can just turn that off. Then we can go here, and we can say, let's render this out under grains out front. And now I'm just going to hit export all textures and render this out. Now that we have exported our first set of textures, we need to do it for the top-down perspective. So let's go to view, go to top viewport, zoom in a bit, create a new camera, fix the view like we did last time, zoom in again, go out a bit, center it, that looks good. So now we need to export this view. So under your flipbook textures, just go to render intermediate images, change the camera to camera two, and change your export to be grains out top. And now let's export these and bring these into Unreal. Let's set up those vellum grains in Unreal. Let's go into our smoke folder. Let's grab this M template pyro advanced, copy it. Let's paste it out here, and we're going to call it M grains. Let's open that up. And we're going to take our dynamic parameter, and we're going to change the second parameter to be called time, and the third parameter to be called emission. Now let's put down a multiply and plug in emission into A, and we'll put the output into emissive color, and we're going to take that add node and plug that into B. Now let's put down a particle color, and let's plug the particle color into the base color. Now let's take this dynamic parameter, we're going, to, we're going to drag it way to the back. And then we're going to plug this time into the autoplay. And the reason we're doing this is we're going to be able to have more control over the time inside Niagara, and since it's only spawning once, we don't need this particle relative time. Now let's go to our material and let's make a material instance and let's call this m grains top open that up so now we need to set our light position just like we did last time Next, we can get rid of our motion vector scale because we won't be using motion vectors for these grains. Now let's check these boxes so we can put in our textures. And let's go to grains out top and then we'll grab the textures that we exported out of Houdini. So let's take our final color. Let's take our MDC1 and our MDC2. Save that and then let's go back out and let's make a copy of this instance. And then we'll call this M grains front. Let's open that. And then all we're going to do here is we're going to change the textures that are being used here to the front textures. So I'll open up that folder. Let's drag in the final color, MDC1 and MDC2. Save it. Now let's go back out and let's open up our strike system. Now let's just copy and paste our smoke system. Now let's just copy and paste our smoke emitter and we'll rename that to grains front. 
Now let's put in our mgrains front material instance. And then we don't need all these parameters, so let's get rid of drag, collision, solve force and velocity, add velocity from point and sphere location. And then under spawn burst instantaneous, set it to one. And let's solo this just so we can see it better. So obviously it's spawning around randomly. So let's go to initialize particles and we're gonna set this to be, let's set it to non-uniform for now, but we're just gonna set it to 400 by 400 to start out. And then let's go to the rotation. And we don't want this to have random rotation. So let's set the sprite mode to unset. And let's go to dynamic material parameters and let's set the and let's set the opacity to be one and the time, let's make a curve. And we're gonna set that to be from zero to 0.9. Just like that. And then let's set the emission to be 0.2 by 0 0.5, 2 0.4. All right, okay. So now we have this coming in, but we also want this to be staying around for not a random lifetime, we want the lifetime to be just one, I think is perfect. All right, and you can see this is spawning in exactly the same way every time. So the least we can do is go into UV mode and set the random X for the UVs. That way sometimes it'll be spawning to the left and sometimes it'll be spawning to the right. All right, now let's copy and paste that and let's get started on the grains top. Let's rename that. Solo this and then let's go here and we'll do grains top instance. It looks like there's something weird with our textures. So let's go back to the grains top instance. Go back down here. Make sure these are correct. Go to here, here. Coming in correctly. Okay, let's go back out. Up strike and there it goes, okay. So now that that's working, we obviously don't want this. It's spawning just in the middle of the air and we want this spawning on the ground. So under facing mode inside Sprite Renderer, we're going to change this to custom facing vector. And then under particle update, type in align Sprite to mesh orientation. And you're gonna change this to be 001 and mesh orientation relative sprite to one. So now this is spawning on the ground. But as you can see, it's spawning in the same way and it's not very interesting. So let's go to initialize particles and we're gonna set the sprite rotation mode to be random. And we don't need this, so we'll just set this to unset. So now this is spawning around in a random rotation every single time. That's cool. So now what we're gonna do is let's Go to dynamic material parameters, and we want this to stay around for a while. We want this to spawn and then stick around. Unlike the other one that's just falling into the ground, we want this one to spawn and then stick around. So let's go into emitter state, or initialize particles, and we'll set the lifetime to four. And obviously this is now staying around for four seconds. Let's go into dynamic materials and let's set the lifetime, let's set it to be 0.5 when it finishes its life cycle or its animation. So now that that's set up, let's unsolo this and let's look at everything together. And whoop, look at that. This bottom uh, grains front is spawning way below the ground, which is not at all what we want. So we want to move this up so that it's right above our grains top. And we can do that in the sprite render. And when you look here, default pivot in UV space, we can change the pivot of where this is at. So let's set the pivot in the Y to one. And now you can see it's spawning where it's supposed to be. But as you can see, this one's way too big and this one's way too small. And you can see this coming out here. This looks bad, we need to fix that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to initialize particles with this. And this is why I set this up to be non-uniform. I'm gonna set the X to be 200 so that it's not as wide and it's just going up. And then I'm gonna go back into the top and I'm gonna set this to be 600 by 600. Like that. 
So now we have this. Uh, the front particles are spawning, and they're sometimes going to the left and sometimes going to the right. And then the top grains are spawning, and they will randomly rotate in different directions, which is what we want. OK. So now what we're going to do is we're going to set it up so if you look here, if you look here, the grains are showing up in front, which is not at all we want. This lightning should be the first thing we see, and the order of everything is just all wrong. So what we're going to do is we're going to change, go to Mesh Renderer, go to the bottom, and then you have this Sort Order Hint. And this is a hint that tells the system what should be showing up first, what has priority. You can think of this like layers in Photoshop or something. So you can, on Sort Order, we're going to change this one to 5. We're going to change the ground tendrils to 4 the smoke to three, and then for grains, we're going to set both of them to be two. Come on. There we go. Oop. Two. So now the lightning will always show up first. Looks like that top. Oh, weird. Okay, there. So now they have the right priority, and the smoke is showing up in front of our grains.